uh, the remarks we just heard resonate with you, uh, inspire you? What parallels can you see between uh, that and the work that you all do? Stayed with me from President Sir Leaf's talk, and I just want to say sort of everything. <laughs> but if I have to choose, um, <laughs> I do think it's the importance of collaboration and um, dem democratic engagement in a, in, in, in a meaningful way. Listening to people who whose experience is going to help us all be more collaborative, be more participatory, believe in ourselves and hold on to hope is, you know, was a very powerful message for me in that regard. We go about sort of creating more just systems or maybe a, a metaphor that I like to use sometimes is it's, it's as if you have a, a table, think of kind of a, a mosaic tile laden table and you've, you've spilled some kind of a, a fruit juice on it, something that's dark and red and difficult to get out, uh, you can scrub that table to death. And at the end of the day, you're going to have some kind of stickiness between the tiles you just didn't get to, and it's not going anywhere. Um, and that's, that's part of that systemic construct mm. that we have to understand. And, and I think the best way you can tackle it, frankly, is to look for opportunities to subvert. Why this, this conversation today is so timely and to hear what she had to share about what happened in Liberia. But then you think, now, what do we do with going forward? I think it's a grateful thank you to you and other people who run for public office, because I think there's a wonderful connection for those of us who do a lot of grassroots on the ground organizing. So it's kind of a changing hearts and minds, changing of public policy, and where do the twain come together, or how do you make sure that you keep on doing it? I only say that to say that as we shift the landscape, what do people come across? How do people engage with all the ways folks learn about a place or the past? Places like historic sites, places, um, you know, that are outside the K-12 um, schools and, and then are also resources for K-12 schools also become this important way for people who are moving to North Carolina to learn more about the places that they're living. So can people listen <laughs> to the working class and to the poor. It's not that they're not speaking always, but that um, yeah. do people in power listen and what are the ways that get to, how do you get to have authority in the world? How does someone, we all want to, to be able to do something, uh, what can a young person right now in North Carolina do? What should they be thinking about ways that they can impact the world around them? How can they help? And the other thing I'd ask, also ask is, um, how does, what does wellness play in that? This is hard work. You all do very difficult, challenging work, and we all know it is challenging. How, how do we take care of ourselves as, as well while taking care of uh, others and being in service of others? I've always believed that learning from people, from their strategies, from their stories, from their inspiration helps us hold on to that, knowing that we're just the next person in the relay race, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Pauli Murray talked about that. Mm -hmm. Who's handing the baton to you? How much you have to be connected to them to actually get a firm hold of that? And who are you handing it off to? Um, while also holding on to the potential, and in, in Pauli's case, the potential of democracy, uh, the potential the potential for uh, justice for everyone. So I think I would think about ways I can invest in, in myself so that I can hold on to the hope. Um, I think that one of the best things you can do is give yourself a ton of grace, a ton of grace. Give yourself time, give yourself space, um, be fiercely kind. Um, being fiercely kind means sometimes doing things that aren't nice but uh, are, are fiercely kind and defensive of not just people that deserve to be defended, but of yourself as well. Defend your time, defend your stance, protect yourself. Um, and then also on top of that, uh, get exposure. Just go exactly like Representative Alston was talking about. Go to meetings, uh, go to talks, come to things like this. A few things. I think young people should, uh, you know, the kind of things that we're talking about and the issues that this conversation is sitting around are, are big, Get kind of to Barbara's point, uh, you mm -hmm. know, about the pace of change. Um, and just recognize that, you know, you can do something, you know, as President Johnson Shirley said, every single day by supporting the people you care about, just standing up for people that you care about and around issues that matter to you in the little ways, in your own household, mm -hmm. every single day, at, at school, uh, whatever the case may be, those things matter um, because, you know, you empower 
you know, individuals, and that has a ripple effect that can be really, really important in your own communities. In her Nobel Prize speech, Madam President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf invited girls and women everywhere to find their voices, right? saying, quote, each of us has our own voice and the differences among us are to be celebrated, but our goals are in harmony. They are the pursuit of peace, the pursuit of justice. They are the defense of rights to which all people are entitled. May all of your voices continue these dialogues going forward. Thank you.